So <laughs> what I like the most of fact how we play the second half as a two win down in the half time. Playing here without n not much composure or what really you have to do, the transition they are so so dangerous and they can score more goals and we control the game really well. And uh, yeah, it was Madrid. So Bernabeu is special. We live this kind of situation many times. You go to three, okay, ten minutes left, the game is over. Mm -hmm. He is so. But we take we take the result. One week in Manchester, our people will be sold out. They will help us to score one goal. We'll do the rest, and we'll try again to you know to reach semi-final. It's simple. The team who wins will reach semi-final. Dave, over that place. Hi, Pep. Um, given you were three three two ahead with about twenty minutes to go, do you see it as a missed opportunity, or are you satisfied with it's the fine, draw? It's fine. It's Bernabeu, my friend. <laughs> You are from England, you don't know what does it mean to play in Bernabeu. And in Champions League, take the result. And the way we played especially, the way we played. First half, players like have the composure to so safe with the ball, to don't lose the balls. We lost more than usual against Madrid. It's so difficult because they have not just legs, they have the quality to, to make this transition effectively. But in second half, we play with incredible personality. We try to, you know, to score the goals. We did it. I cannot say more. Score three goals in Bernabeu is really, really good. Jack, on the left, please. <coughs> what, what was the um, the most impressive thing about the, the reaction? Because that's the sort of being two one down at half time and and the, and the way you played in the first half seemed like the, the team showed a hell of a lot of courage to like pick themselves back up and then control the game in the second. I had the feeling is a process. So uh, uh, this result of this game in the first one season, two seasons, three seasons together, we have lost for one five one. And we are not stable emotionally. This game is one of the key points: is being stable emotionally. It's, it's fundamental. Um, the good moments take it, the bad moments be as much as stable. I said in, the, in with the players. So if you pretend coming to Bernabeu play against Real Madrid in Champions League, his competition, and the idea, the idea, the game is going to happen, is going to happen during 90 minutes, you are wrong. So we have an idea, because we believe in the way you have to do it, but it's impossible to control all the time against Madrid. And how you are stable or you know, stick with the plan in the bad moment, that's the key point. In the first seasons could not happen, we are not good. Because I said many times, we are one decade, 12 years, 30 years, playing this competition at a high level. So you need time to learn. Uh, we're learning, and now we are a little bit more stable. And this is hopefully foot in the future we can do better and better. Richard. <coughs> um, hi, Pep. Um, last year, Phil Foden only played four minutes against Real Madrid in the two games tonight. He obviously scored an unbelievable goal. Is this the night when Europe saw how good he is and how important is it? was it for him to play? Who? For Phil Foden. Well, Phil was not involved in the game, the first half. We didn't find him. Find him. I think he was not one of the best performances, but he has this spark and score goals to create something. So, <clears throat> this is the truth. Paul. Oh. <coughs> Hi, Pep. Um, when did you decide to take Kevin out of the team and, and how is he feeling now? When I arrived here in the locker room. In the last meeting in the hotel, he was playing. He didn't say anything to me. But it started to be bad and bad and bombings, bombings when arrive and he doesn't he didn't feel good to to play. How disruptive was that for you? Obviously because he's a very key player, very senior established player. One of the secrets in the high level is adapt as quick as the chaos. It's not time to complain. So Kyle is not here, he's not here. Nathan is not here, he's not here. Kevin cannot play. We play with 11. So I would prefer to be here. So hopefully it can be next <coughs> next Wednesday. Last one in English, please. Sir. Thank you. Hi, Pep. Do you have any idea how Foden is in terms of his injury? Uh, it's a knock. The thing is not... He was grumpy with me why I make a substitution. So that means he's okay. Can we start in Spanish, please? The gentleman in green in the middle. Thank you. 
Hola, Pepe. Abraham Romero, El Mundo. Hi, Pepe. Abraham Romero from El Mundo. Yesterday you said that uh, Carlo had something ready for this game um, as a difference, as opposed to previous years. I don't know if uh, something has surprised you, maybe, um, that Vinicius was playing as the striker, or what do you take uh, for the second game? Yeah, ask Carlo. I think I don't want to get into uh, into his uh, work, but uh, yeah, of course that Vinicius was playing uh, on the inside and not on the outside was a little bit surprising for me. But they're both playing very, they're both uh, very fast. I would say playing on both positions. In terms of the of the team, well, when you saw it, he could play with four three 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 in the middle. But today he said against Leipzig that it didn't work. He didn't like it. So I thought that when a, when a coach does something and you don't like it, you don't repeat it. And I thought that uh, they would play the way they did it. That they have done it, and that's it. They've had their their times. We've had ours, and the result is there. Hi Pep, Melchor Ries from Cadena Copa Live for Tiempo de Juego. Uh, congratulations on contributing to the great show that we've enjoyed. The fans have, have enjoyed a lot and we know you very well. So maybe the fact that the game was not under control uh, is different for you. We know that it's a Bernabeu. We know that both teams have very have, have very good quality. I don't know what word you, would you use to uh, consider the game. And maybe do you consider the result is fair and do you think that you have an advantage because the second leg will be at home Well, the feeling that it happened last years when we play against Real Madrid is that it doesn't matter how good you 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 you, you play they will score a goal that's for sure and I accept it right now next Wednesday um, uh, we will t we'll try that it's not the case we'll try to be more efficient um, and we will try to be a little bit better and uh, and that's it um, it's basically what I felt during the game sometimes well I could thought what was going to happen because we have very trustworthy uh, players like Roger Bernardo or John that they've lost more balls that um, well, it's, it's normal and in that situation Real Madrid uh, can hurt you but uh, when we were 2-1 down uh, we started well we tried to cheer ourselves up uh, the game was more or less under control and of course well the talent of, of the goals basically sets a difference like Valverde's goal that, that has been exceptional so we were in a good position uh, we were trying to re reject the ball so I don't know who has passed the ball, but I think it was Vinicius and Valverde. I mean, it was a very good goal. What can you do about that? You give a round of applause and you accept it, and that's it. And the second leg. Hmm. Oh, well, I prefer to 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 play the second leg, the the, the second game at home at home because of uh, previous experiences, of course, but. Uh, the Real Madrid is the king of this competition. Uh, he has been in these situations many times, so um, I don't know what can happen, to be honest. Well, the favorite will be uh, who plays better, who imposes its way of playing, and that's it. But our people will give us a hand, that's for sure. And I think that everything is sold out for the second leg, as it was the case here. And I'm sure that it's going to be a good game. Hello, Pep here. Last year, Mende was not here for Real Madrid. I wanted you to explain a little bit because uh, your team was very comfortable, especially on the right side. I wanted you to explain how you think that Mende could change the way your team attacks. It's more defender than Camavinga. Camavinga um, is, attacks more. I mean, Mende knows that business better. If uh, Mende is, at the, is in the middle, well, Camavinga is better. But there are players that have not been able to play, as it has been our case. And I guess that if he is able to heal, Mendy will be at his position. Hello, Marcel Duval from Dosis Footballera. Uh, so you've uh, been uh, forward twice. Uh, maybe this is um, this is not a good result for you. No, it's absolutely not. It's a good result for us. A good result, yeah, definitely. I have a too good opinion for this team to think that we will come here to uh, to play. I mean, this is not a piece of cake, you know. Uh, they are very good, and uh, well, the uh, playoff is open, and we'll try to solve it at home.
Hello, Pep. Good night. I'm Tomiana from Cadena Ser. I've told Sergio at Movistar Televisión that, well, the, the pitch is amazing, but if the grass was a little bit better, it would be great. So what did you like from the grass? Um, what do you think about it? You've been a player, you're a coach. I don't know how you've, how you've seen it. Well, I haven't been on the pitch, but this is what the players have told me. Please, no hard feelings, okay? Um, it's just a remark. The, the, the stadium is amazing. Okay, the locker rooms, everything. We all have to see it. It's a great piece of work. And uh, in, when I remember that Real Madrid has always had a very good grass, it was like a carpet, you know? Um, but, uh, well, today that was not the case. But I'm sure that they will fix it. No doubt about it and no problem. Uh, but... Pep Eduardo Vidal for GSM Deportes. So you're a coach that likes to control games and in a very structured way. How do you live with chaos that these games have? I've answered your colleague before. We need to accept that the other team is very good. Uh, you think that we are here sometimes and what we say was what happens before and later. So what's the influence in Foden's call, in my case, or Guardiol with the right uh, leg, can you tell me? Or Carlo, for example. Or uh, Valverde, sorry. We try that. Well, we, we try to do our job, but it is they. They are the ones who play. Maybe I would have liked to win the game. Of course, maybe I would have liked to 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 shoot to to, to the goal. Yes, but we are play, playing against Real Madrid, out of home, and these things happen. So the more you accept it, before playing that is going to happen, you will be much better. So if if it happens and you get stressed, well, it's happening, it's happening. Well, you could be um, in difficult in, in trouble. So we've improved compared to the first years that we were playing this competition because of a simple reason: we were not used to being in this competition and the quarterfinals or semifinals. Never. So this is a process to understand. You need to leave uh, how Real Madrid um, won the playoff two years ago, and that's it. It's a matter of time. Nosotros tenemos que intentar inspirar para que la saque, la tiene porque tiene de la manera que vive, de la manera que le gusta entrenar eh, y lo que quiere mejorar al final es lo que le lleva en el día a día a hacerlo. Si no lo haría un día o dos, si no lo haría, pero cuando alguien es tan consistente es que eso se ha convertido en un hábito para él y, y es un jugador clave para nosotros. Sam, so the league with Gabriel have been so good all year, really. almost perfect, but what, what was the difference tonight? Now this happens, uh, maybe it happened before and you don't get punished, but this is the level. Uh, against this kind of players, this kind of opposition, especially if they have a space. Um, you know that they can punish you and um, now we have let them run in a few occasions and that's something that obviously in the return leg we have to do much better. There's a lot of talk about Harry Kane's challenge on Gabriel with the, the arm and the elbow. What did you make of that? I haven't seen it again. I think the referees made a decision and uh, that's done. Okay. Okay. Well, you've spoken a lot this season about the need of the stage for 25 fit players and having a really good, strong squad. Did we see what impact that can have tonight with the subs? Absolutely. When you bring two or three players like uh, we have done with uh, Brooke, Alex, that's why we have to have time to change a few things. And then um, with Leo and um, and Gabi, then Thomas when he needs because again it became a bit chaotic the game and it was a big danger to lose it. I think they all had a, a big impact tonight. And they start to look them so experienced in this competition. But do you think maybe when the momentum shifted in the first half, maybe your team tried a little bit of inexperience at this stage with the way they're sort of trying to win it and almost start that I don't know, but uh, obviously that created some insecurity in the team because we have given them things that uh, they have to earn it and, and then you start to defend open space against them that they have a huge capacity to hurt you there. But uh, afterwards, I think we reacted well and um, we never gave up. Thank you to the crowd again for the atmosphere. It was unbelievable. And we go again in Munich. Amy? Being in such great form in the Premier League, do you feel like you've learned something about your players when you see them in this kind of slightly different environment, the, the, the different questions that they've had to face today? Yes, but that's, uh, that's experiences and, uh, and they have done really well. You know, there are moments in games uh, that are very defining, especially in the Champions League, and today we have seen a very clear example of that. Yes, sir. 
by the end, the Kyle looked obviously furious after the penalty decision. Have you seen him like that on the pitch, in, in that emotional state after a decision? I was already looking at the other goal because he was there. I said, we are with 10 men. <laughs> the game hasn't been finished and uh, and I was more worried about that, that, that Bee's reaction. Can you, can you understand sympathise with that reaction in the Kyle? Yeah, for sure. If he, if he had that belief that it was a penalty, for sure you're going to react like this. Yeah, what you say? Um, Arteta, um, what's the mood like in the change rooms? Because obviously you talked about the disappointment of not managing to get the win, but what are the boys currently feeling like in the change room? Is there the optimism to go to Munich? Yeah, obviously in in certain way um, that we are alive and uh, we've done what we had to do after the game became very very difficult for us but as well understanding that uh, that we have to step up the level in certain aspects of the game uh, to be much better and to have as a, a real chance for us to, to win the game. Okay, we're at the last two now. That's it. Uh, well, just, yeah. When you spoke about the small margins, does Champions League experience come into that that Bayern have? And if so, like, how do you speak to a new team in the Champions League to, to get over that or to kind of compensate? Well, I think we have made some mistakes today and uh, I think probability for the next, hap next time to happen, there are less. So, okay, it happened today, let's learn from it. Uh, let's support those players that they've been unbelievable. And it's part of football as well. I find it the old adage, if you can't win again, don't lose the game. Is that what the players have to understand moving forward from this? Because it's still basically 50-50, would you say, going into the Allianz Arena. You have to have that belief, but history is showing you otherwise. You've just got to make that history now, haven't you, when you go about there. How is that going to be difficult for you to push on from today's result to say, listen, you came close today? Yeah, you have to feel it on the pitch and, and, and game state tells you and it gives you a lot of information. Is the game there for the taking? raise the level of risk and um, and commit uh, more players forward or or do something else the game is in a state that be careful and I think the game after the scoring and given three four five straight balls away and allow certain transition it wasn't there to win it and it was closer to lose if, if we make a few mistakes and but uh, proud for the reaction then. I am I am very proud and and now I sense the belief that okay we're gonna go to Munich and uh, we're gonna have the chance to win it and, and we're gonna be better in certain areas and and that's how we're going to prepare it okay thanks yeah. everyone thank you